and we've been talking for a long time, you and I, back when you were in the Texas State House, yeah. uh, where you were fighting injustice. Uh, and now we've got this campaign, this, this Trump campaign that's running. It's got its, it's got its own Bible behind it. It's got the Project 2025. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's a recipe for undoing some of those civil rights, whether it be abortion, whether it be voting rights. It's all in this book. Yeah. We, Democrats have, a, have something to, to completely fight against right now. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, literally the way that I phrase it is that they're playing in our faces. Um, and so it's on us to make sure that we read up. This isn't about us out there just spewing, you know, the typical kind of campaign rhetoric. We have serious threats that we're facing, threats that they've already started to put into place. What most people don't realize is that the Heritage Foundation has been working on this for decades. Yep. And so when I served in the State House, when we were looking at the vigilante bill that they brought as it relates to reproductive access in the state of Texas, that was a Heritage Foundation right. bill. They made sure that they sent that same bill to Florida. They have sent it all over the country. So when we see these six week bans, it actually comes out of their think tank. All of the CRT nonsense that yep. we were getting yep. when everybody like this, a Democrat was like, we don't teach CRT, right? Right, right? And we were having to educate people. We were trying to tell them what is and what isn't CRT instead of just saying, listen, the Heritage Foundation has decided that they are trying to delete black folk from history. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is about. About. They tried to dress it up and call it something else, but they were the ones that pushed that bill. So we know that this has actually been underway. They now have just had the audacity to loud it to the extent that they have laid it out in almost a thousand pages yep. so that they could hand it out to their psychophants. And the problem is that the cultists that are following Trump, they don't really care what's in anything if they're actually going to pick up a book and read. All they care about is that their cult leader is is going to be back in office. But for the rest of us... Yeah, we got some warning to do. We've got some yeah. warnings to do. So, so here's the thing. Uh, on one hand, there's this, right? There's this uh, existential threat to democracy that you yeah. and I spend a lot of time talking about. Yeah. On the other hand, Kamala Harris is going out there and has caused a level of excitement and enthusiasm um, and engagement in a conversation about a future. She's talking yeah. about, we can do this together. We can create, we are America. We can create this remarkably bright future. Those things sort of don't seem like the same thing, but it's working for her. Yes, it is. Um, I tell everyone that the word of the week has been hopeful. That was yeah. for last week. Yeah. Because that is the word that people kept saying. And the last time we talked about hope was back in 2008. Yeah. And so we're seeing that same level of kind of groundswell where people are organically coming together. As it was mentioned, you know, as Rachel was just talking about, is just the different calls. Um, I was so sad that I couldn't be on the white dude call um, because I wanted to see what all was going on. But I am excited, but we've got to carry this for 100 days. Yeah. It can't just be that we got excited for the first seven right. or eight days. Right. This has to be translated into actual but votes. But that, that's about building a coalition, right? Yes. And, and, and you, again, coming from Texas, in the heart of some really dark times, yeah. you understood that, that it doesn't matter that you're definitely not winning that next vote, because you knew every time yeah. you weren't going to win that next yeah. vote. But you, people came out to the legislature. People came out. You, you brought people together. This is the coalition building that Kamala Harris needs to engage in and is engaging in yeah. for the next 99 days. Yeah, she is building her own coalition. It's kind of like what we saw with Barack Obama, where it wasn't necessarily just the traditional. He was going and grabbing people that had never been engaged in politics. And some of them checked out after they voted that one right. time or maybe the right. two times. But I think that she's doing that. And I think that she is exciting young people at the levels that we need them to be excited about. We know that in um, the midterms, they were saying that there was going to be this red wave and they kept looking at how engaged young people were and how they managed to stave off this red wave. And we've seen this Republican House. We know what they're up to. Right now, I'm supposed to be at work. Um, it's just by happenstance that I'm not. Or it's literally because they are nothing but chaos creators. We are supposed to be working on the budget this week. Right. And we're going on recess a week early. So guess what? We're going to roll up on um, the same deadline that we've rolled up on a couple of times where it's a matter of are we going to shut down? When yep. we go back, it'll be September. That is our deadline. You're talking about people that are trying to convince you that they're going to take care of the economy when they won't even pass a simple budget. 
That is insane. Right. And we recently heard you played the clip of Trump and him talking about basically how he's going to just never leave office. He tried right. to do it last time, if those yeah. people want to remember January 6th. But he's also talking in a week in which specifically black Americans are looking at what happened to Sonia Massey. Yep. He's out there and he's talking about how, yes, I want to make sure that all police officers have the immunity. To do, yes, he said it. This yes, week. He, he said that. So when they shot that woman straight in the head in her home when she called them yes. for help. Yeah. Like, this is a problem in America. And for those that don't know, yes, we have tried to get the George Floyd and Policing Act passed, and it's passed the House, but we couldn't get it past the Senate. But even despite that, what President Biden did was executive orders. Whatever he could do mm -hmm. to get portions of that bill done, he has done it. It's kind of like student loan forgiveness. Whatever he could do, despite what the Supreme Court has done, yep. he's been able to relieve $174 billion worth of student loan debt. That is absolutely changing people's lives. And I've talked to people who have said, I think the highest number that I've gotten is that someone had 270 thousand dollars that was relieved can you imagine getting two hundred and seventy thousand dollars off your back it is presenting opportunities to build that generational wealth and so while i know that nothing is perfect in this country and there's definitely not a perfect party i can tell you that there's one party that is trying to move us forward and there's another one that is consistently trying to drag us back i think that that's why it's so important that president biden showed up today in Austin, Texas, so that we can be reminded mm -hmm. of the rich history that he has. And it was so amazing because he had Ambassador Andrew Young there, yep. his connections to the civil rights movement. Now, you asked Trump about his history, and you've got to go back to the Central Park Five, yep. or you've got to go back to the fact that he and his dad were wanting to keep black folk yep. from having the ability to have housing. As a black woman, prominent black woman in politics, I'm sure you're not at all surprised by the attacks that have been launched on Kamala Harris. No. What's surprising is the degree to which most of them are not landing and they're they're being turned around by the K hive into yes. into fun things about Kamala Harris. That's I mean, right. what, what a what a horrible thing for somebody who's trying to insult someone yes. to have it turned around and 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 motivate more people. Yes, definitely. Uh, DEI has now definitely earned it. So I will continue to use the DEI phrase as they try to make it a negative thing. But I think that that is the beautiful thing because. What they could be doing is having actual policy discussions. Yes. But the problem is their policies don't meet the measure of what everyday people are looking for. It meets with the billionaires that are going out and donating to Donald Trump. What they want, absolutely, as he talked to the oil and gas billionaires and told them, you need me back because those Trump tax cuts will expire in 2025. Mm -hmm. And just again, to rewind the record, Trump ran our national debt up $8 trillion in his one four-year term. This isn't somebody who's fiscally responsible. Yep. This is somebody who looks out for his homies yep. and himself. And the rest of us, we're left footing the bill. Project 2025 will tell you that it's it's, it's things that go to, uh, to people, benefits that go to people that's running a deficit up. But that's not true. It's tax cuts. It's, it's absolutely tax cuts. And this, again, is at a time in which we don't have a farm bill passed in the House. Yep. It was supposed to be passed last year because the Republicans are saying, we want to cut $30 billion from SNAP. And I'm trying to yell it to rural America. Yeah. Rural America uses more SNAP benefits than urban America. But guess what? Those Republican reps that represent rural America, they are fighting against them. I tell people all the time, I'm not just fighting for my constituents, I'm actually fighting yeah. harder for yours as well. And so we need to remind people that they say, you know what, it's too much for people to get $6 a day to eat. But hey, these rich folk up top, we've got to make sure that we're saving them as much money as possible. Is that the type of leadership that you want in the future in these United States of America? Or do you want someone who believes in growing the economy from the middle out and that's what the Biden-Harris um, team has done this entire time. And it is what Vice President Harris is prepared to continue to do, is to expand upon opportunities for those that have come to this country, a country that is supposed to represent possibilities as well as freedom. It's good to see you in person, as always, good but I always have to thank you because you always answer the call. When we need to talk about something important, uh, you're available to us. So well, thank you so I much. thank you so much. And please, 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 
keep pushing the message around Project 2025. We absolutely will. Jasmine Crockett uh, is a member of Congress from Texas.